We've all seen SpaceX rockets landing on sea platforms, but have you ever seen a rocket take off from one? Well, that's not so unusual in China right now. Sea launches are becoming a big deal over there. So why is launching rockets from the sea suddenly so popular in China? And why don't we see it happening more often in the US or anywhere else? Let's find out. Just over a week ago, a Smart Dragon 3 SD3 rocket launched from a floating platform off the coast near Rizhou, China, delivering its satellite payload into a preset orbit. According to the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, the rocket's developer, this marked the eighth mission using an SD3. On board were 11 satellites belonging to the Geely 06 constellation, developed by G-Space, a private satellite manufacturer and subsidiary of the Geely Holding Group, headquartered in Hangzhou. The constellation is focused on Internet of Things connectivity from space, and this mission is a key step in expanding that capability. This launch also exemplifies a rising trend in China's aerospace efforts, sea-based rocket launches. While now gaining momentum, maritime launches have not always been part of China's space strategy. For much of its history, the nation relied exclusively on inland launch sites, often located deep in mountainous terrain. The foundation of China's space program was laid in the country's vast, sparsely populated interior. Its first three launch centers, Jiuquan, Taiyuan, and Xichang, were products of the Third Front campaign of the 1960s and 70s, a massive strategic push to build military and industrial infrastructure far from coastal regions vulnerable to foreign invasion. These sites were selected not for their convenience or ideal launch conditions, but for their isolation and security. For decades, these inland spaceports were the backbone of China's journey into space, each developing unique roles shaped by geography and national priorities. But the thing is, some of those land-based launch sites actually put nearby villages at risk. Take the region east of Xichang, for example. It's dotted with small communities, which means every rocket launch has the potential to rain down debris dangerously close to where people live. And it used to be even worse. For a long time, many Chinese rockets ran on hypergolic propellants, which are not only highly toxic, but also ignite on contact. So basically, if a booster came down in the wrong place, it was like dropping a chemical bomb. To avoid that kind of scenario, China eventually built a new launch site by the sea. Well, not literally in the sea, but close. The Wenchang Space Launch Site is located on the northeast coast of Hainan, a tropical island province in the South China Sea. Opened in 2016, Wenchang isn't just another spaceport. It's a game changer for China's space program. It was built with a bigger vision in mind to support heavy lift rockets, which are essential for things like the Chinese space station, Mars missions, and future moon landings. Without Wenchang, none of that would be on the table. Interestingly, the idea of launching from Hainan isn't new. Engineers had their eyes on it back in the 1970s because launching closer to the equator gives rockets a nice speed boost. But back then, during the Cold War, sticking a critical national facility out in the South China Sea, where US and Soviet forces were active, was considered too risky. Fast forward a few decades, the geopolitical climate shifted, and China's space ambitions hit a new level. The country needed bigger rockets, so big they couldn't be transported by train to the inland launch sites. Suddenly, a coastal launch site wasn't just a nice option, it was the only way forward. But as I mentioned at the start of the video, China isn't stopping with Wen Chang. While it may be the crown jewel of land-based spaceports, China is also building out something far more flexible, sea-based launches. By heading out to sea, China's space program can get around the geographic limits of launching from land. It also opens the door to launching more often and with more resilience. The center of this maritime push is the Eastern Aerospace Port, located in the coastal city of Haiyang in Shandong province. Launching rockets from mobile sea platforms comes with a bunch of strategic perks that fixed land sites just can't offer. For one, these platforms can be moved, meaning you can position them in international waters wherever it makes the most sense for a specific mission. Want to launch to an equatorial orbit? Sail the platform right to the equator and take full advantage of Earth's spin to boost payload capacity. You get more flexibility, more efficiency, and access to basically any orbital inclination. 
A lot of countries are tough to work with, either because of political instability or simply because they lack the infrastructure. But when you're launching from a platform or vessel, that problem goes away. You can just pick the best spot and go. Another big plus, no more worrying about falling rocket stages crashing down near villages. Now you're far away from cities, you're far away from land. You're minimizing the risk of any accidents or failures. When you launch from way out at sea, all that debris drops harmlessly into the ocean. Problem solved. There's also the issue of capacity. China's four land-based spaceports are already handling packed launch schedules. Sea-based platforms effectively add new launch pads to the mix, helping to ease the pressure and ramp up launch frequency, especially important when deploying large satellite constellations that need multiple launches in a short time. And finally, there's the resilience factor. If something were to knock out one of the land-based sites, say a natural disaster or sabotage, a sea-based platform could keep critical missions going. Solid fuel rockets, which are often used in sea launches, can be prepped quickly, making this a great option for responsive, rapid turnaround launches. Seeing all the advantages, China has gone all in on building a dedicated base for its sea launch operations. That's where the Eastern Aerospace Port in Haiyang comes in. It's not just a launch site. It's being developed as a full-on aerospace hub. The plan is built around a one-port, four-centers model, a central sea launch home port supported by facilities for rocket R&D, satellite manufacturing, sea platform development, and satellite data processing. Basically, it's a one-stop shop. Rockets can be built, tested, loaded with payloads, and rolled straight onto their launch ships, all in one place. It's a vertically integrated setup designed to streamline everything from development to launch. So far, China's sea launches have used modified civilian vessels as mobile platforms, things like large deck barges or heavy lift ships that have been retrofitted to handle rockets and launch systems. Some of the key vessels include the Debo 3, the semi submersible Tairui, and the Defu 15002. These platforms have supported launches from both state owned and commercial companies, showing how sea launch serves both military and civilian goals. China's first sea launch happened on June 5, 2019, when a Long March 11H rocket lifted off from a barge in the Yellow Sea. The H stands for Haiyang, meaning ocean in Chinese. The Long March 11, a four-stage solid-fueled rocket, has since completed multiple successful sea launches. Then there's the Smart Dragon 3, Jia Long 3, which I mentioned earlier. It's another solid-fueled rocket developed by a state-owned enterprise and designed specifically for sea launch. It's aimed at the growing market for small commercial satellites and constellations. It can carry up to 1.5 tons to a sun-synchronous orbit about 500 kilometers up, perfect for low-Earth orbit missions. Sea launch has caught on so fast that commercial players are jumping in too. In September 2023, Galactic Energy became the first private Chinese company to pull off a sea launch, sending its solid-fueled Series 1 rocket into orbit from a mobile platform. Then in January 2024, Orient Space made waves with its debut launch of the Gravity 1, currently the most powerful solid commercial rocket in China, also launched from a ship at sea. The fact that both state-backed and private companies are embracing sea launch this quickly says a lot. It's clear this capability is becoming a central piece of China's space strategy, not just for now, but for whatever comes next. But of course, nothing's perfect, and sea launch has its own set of drawbacks. First off, startup cost. Buying and converting a ship into a launch platform is way more complicated and expensive than just pouring concrete and welding some steel at a land-based site. Then there's logistics. You're not just dealing with one boat, you need at least two. One as the actual launch platform and another as a command and control center. On top of that, you need a stable communication link to the rocket, living quarters for all the crew, plus regular maintenance for both vessels. All of that adds up. In most cases, operating from sea is simply more expensive and complex than operating from land. These added costs and the technical challenges of launching from a moving platform at sea could easily make the whole thing too pricey to sustain, at least without serious backing. That probably applies to China, too. Given how low some of these sea-launched rockets have been priced, sometimes even rivaling a reusable Falcon 9 from SpaceX, it's hard not to wonder if a lot of this sea-launch boom is being propped up by investor money. Still, with strong government support, major infrastructure being built, and a clear national push to diversify launch capabilities, it's pretty clear that sea launch in China isn't just a passing trend. 
Despite the many advantages of sea-based rocket launches, it's a bit disappointing that China is currently the only country actively pursuing this method. To be fair, SpaceX once had similar ambitions for its massive Starship rocket. In 2020, SpaceX purchased two decommissioned oil rigs, originally built for $515 million each, for just $3.5 million apiece. The rigs, renamed Phobos and Deimos, after the moons of Mars, were acquired from Valaris, an offshore drilling company teetering on the edge of bankruptcy. These semi-submersible platforms were constructed in 2005 by an engineering firm called INSCO. With main decks measuring roughly 73 by 78 meters, they float on large submerged pontoons rather than sitting directly on the ocean floor. This design offers excellent stability, even in rough seas. The rigs can be anchored using seabed cables or kept in position with dynamic positioning systems, water jet thrusters controlled by onboard computers. Since the late 1980s, platforms like these have been built to withstand even Category 5 hurricanes, according to the National Industries Association. That makes them an appealing foundation for a floating rocket launch and landing facility. Mobile, resilient, and structurally robust. By mid-2021, Phobos Phobos had already been partially cleared, and work began on Deimos around March 2022. The plan was to modify these platforms to support Starship operations, creating large open areas for landings, installing a tank farm for propellant storage, and adding heavy lift equipment, such as cranes, or possibly even a Mechazilla-style tower to stack the rocket. But despite the early promise, progress stalled. In early 2022, SpaceX paused the project and eventually sold both rigs. Company president Gwyn Shotwell confirmed the move, explaining that Starship was still in early development and that SpaceX needed to focus all its resources on getting the vehicle flying reliably. Building and operating a sea-based platform would have introduced additional complexity at the wrong time. Still, the idea hasn't been completely ruled out. Once Starship reaches operational maturity, SpaceX may well revisit the concept. And who knows? Someday we might actually see the world's largest rocket launch from the sea. That said, it's now clear that China's space launch infrastructure is far more than just a collection of concrete pads and assembly buildings. It has evolved into a dynamic, geographically diverse ecosystem that reflects the country's shifting strategic priorities. From secretive, security-driven bases carved into remote inland regions during the Cold War, to modern, high-capacity spaceports along the southern coast, and even mobile platforms operating at sea, this expansive network forms the physical backbone of China's space ambitions.